to draw Gromit? Well, maybe I'll start with the structure, first of all. Because Gromit exists as a, a real physical, you know, clay model um, as well, and the drawing and the model do differ slightly, but I, 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 in my mind I've got the principles. I'm trying to do the same principles, really. The, the, like the, the classic, you know, rules about circles in sort of Hollywood, Disney and Hollywood cartoons, you, you know, you've got the, the kind of the back of the head is one circle. Um, but this is a dog who's got a larger muzzle, so I tend to maybe a slightly larger circle and uh, join those up with a line, a flowing line. And um, this isn't how I draw him, but this is how I think in, in terms of his structure. Oh, that's terrible. I'd normally draw two circles um, with eyes pupils in the middle and maybe I would leave a little gap for the pupils. I'll, I'll do that in a minute for the shine on the pupil, that's quite important. And then uh, this is the nose area, um, the actual dog's nose with a highlight in it, fill it in, maybe a little bit of a wrinkle there in the nose. Uh, obviously quite important for Gromit is his brow and maybe a little wrinkle and make the top of that slightly reflect that wrinkle so, so he looks kind of a bit worried or concerned. Um, he does have a back to his head, but you can't always see that from the front. Um, and uh, he might have a bit of a neck if he's surprised, but you'd rarely see that really. So I'll just rub that out. Um, you'd tend to more to go with his anxious look, see, see, see shoulders, raised shoulders like that. Um, there's the armpit. His ears are quite large and floppy. Uh, the, there's a bit of strength in the first bit, like the stem, that hold the ear up, and uh, and they're quite close together, but, but a bit separate. Um, obviously, in 2D, you can't see the, the 3D aspect of it here, but the, if he was a model, this, this bit would kind of be shaded. So he's got large, flat, quite thick plasticine, but flat that, that bends over like that. Um, and that, that's, that very roughly shows you Gromit's shape, um, the principles behind him. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, a sitting up, kind of upright Gromit. If I was drawing him freehand, I would always start with the eyes. Uh, not always perfect circles, I guess. They're supposed to be, but I'm not really a perfect drawer. Uh, the eyes are obviously the uh, you know gateway to the soul, and so how they catch your eyes are important. So you notice that they're slightly squiffy, slightly cross-eyed, which I find makes more contact with the viewer. And I go for the you know the slightly wrinkled look to give him a slight look of worry and concern. Um, um, I sometimes add a little bit of shade underneath to give him a slight darkness. Uh, sort of depth in his personality. Um, put a nose underneath with a highlight on it, fill it in. Um, yeah, with that, with that little wrinkle uh, as well. And uh, following those principles of circles, kind of follow the line around, maybe maybe make the bottom of his nose a bit flatter so it's not perfectly round. Obviously I'm, I'm being a bit freehand here, but that's You know, I just feel for it really. Don't always get it right. Each one's different. I usually do it faster than this as well. I'm just talking. Yeah, so you get the idea. The ears are big and floppy. Bend over. Oops. You know, if I was using a pencil, I'd be rubbing out the whole time, starting again. But that, that roughly shows you, Gromit, with a little bit of feeling. And, um, so if I was drawing um, Gromit on all fours, he is a slightly different, different thing than when he's... He's more human when he's sitting up, and he's, you know, when he's on all fours, he's more following his nose. And uh, In terms of principles, again, I, it, I just draw the more structural. It is a, if you have a circle like that, so make it more into an egg shape. It, it probably goes more like that. That's his backbone. Um, and uh, his tail would be kind of here. 
and uh, he, he'll have a bit of a neck around here, so I, I don't always get it right, and I, I always uh, am struggling to find it. Uh, so this won't go perfectly, but I'll get. Keep it. Yeah, there's there's a you know there's the circles idea going on here. Um, this is showing you the structure underneath as well, really. I probably a bit bigger like that. Oh yeah, I've gone wrong, but um, never mind. I'll keep going. So you'll get quite a messy kind of drawing. This shows you, you know, roughly how his ears work. Um, um, again, I've, I started off as a 2D sort of diagram, now it's turned into a 3D model. So his neck would be, have a perspective. If you could see joints, that would be the joint. Uh, but obviously on the plasticine, you sort of blend that in. He's evolved over the years as well. You know, that ear would be a bit closer in. He used to have a much longer neck and a thinner face. And now he's got a sort of rounder, chubbier face now. Uh, in terms of his legs, you know, I would use the, you know, the rule of cylinders, really. Um, you know, they've got that slightly, but a bit, it's not far off Pluto, you know, Disney. Cartoon. I sort of followed, you know, watched Pluto a lot as a kid, and he's a bit different. I, I thought, you know, what if Pluto was made of plasticine at one point? Uh, especially with all the uh, the gags and the uh, slapstick comedy, and, and watched uh, other stuff, you know, Disney cartoons and uh, Warner Brothers Chuck Jones cartoons. So yeah, I'm just going for a bit of perspective in there as well. Uh, you know, there'd be a three-toe thing going on here. That, 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 those toes are slightly facing away from us. Obviously, some lines I would rub out there. That's probably not quite in proportion. He's, he's got a slightly hunched back from it, and that toe would go bigger. Um, everything's a bit chunky. You know, that's that's the kind of cartoon world that we're in with Wallace and Gromit. That's a kind of a grommet standing on all fours, roughly. I don't often draw him like this, actually, but uh, I'll just try and draw him without the structural bits. You know, start with the two eyes. I always start with the eyes, and then make, them, make him slightly cross-eyed. Um, then put the nose in, go for the highlight, and fill it in. Um, a bit of a wrinkle in the nose, and then you know, make that what those little lines above his eyes are to make him slight that slightly worried, concerned look that he always has, and then uh, go for the quite a, a, a dumpy kind of nose. That's it's not a perfectly round circle here; it's a slightly squeezed one. It makes him a little cuter, I think. Um, let's get the ears in. Oops, they're not quite accurate, but oops. Yeah, I never draw the ears very well, <laughs> unless I'm spending more time on it. But, but yeah, I just put things in to, to denote shadow areas. And I'll have him slightly more uh, turned towards us, so this body might be. Again, I, I tend to draw structure in and then rub it out if I'm doing a, a picture like this. Uh, his legs. You don't actually see him much these days on all fours, I must say. Um, in the last film, I think he was... I don't think... He was only on all, all fours a couple of times, I think, in the whole film, in Matter of Loaf and Death. He's become so human. that He has so much to do that demands him to run around <laughs> and drive vehicles and stuff like that. In fact, we had a... We had a kind of rule, really, on Curse of the Weir Rabbit that... He's never on two legs, but because it made him look oddly human, um, unless there was a reason for him, like he was posing as a human, or he was, he was pushing a cart along, or something like that, a tea trolley, or something. Yeah, and because it looked odd to see his whole body with two legs. Yeah, that, that's that's roughly what he looks like. That gives you an idea. Oh, that was riveting. <laughs>